This is it. After years of dreaming and planning, we have finally made it to the Maldives. This is not any ordinary resort. This is the best place I have been in my entire life. And today, you get to watch the full experience. We paid for this with our own money, so you can definitely know this is not sponsored. Let's get started with our arrival. We got to Malay in style, flying Singapore Airlines business class. Booked on points, of course. After landing, we meet up with a representative from our resort who helps us get ready for our transfer flight. Getting to your hotel from the airport is no simple feat. You typically either need to do a speedboat or a seaplane transfer. For us, we need to do both a domestic flight and a speedboat, which costs about $750 per person round trip. Yikes. You're gonna be paying these prices for basically any resort in the Maldives. And of course, Jessica immediately falls asleep. You think? It's so green. We're not even there yet. I don't think we are. You know it's gonna be a good trip when even the domestic airport is breathtaking. Once we board the speedboat, they give us some delicious lemonade. <sighs> and then off we go. <laughs> Upon arriving, my jaw drops as what I have studied for so long in pictures and videos and reviews finally becomes a reality. We receive what I find to be the most spectacular welcome you could imagine, where about a dozen or so staff members introduce themselves, including someone very special. His name is Tho here, and he was assigned as our gem. This stands for guest experience maker, what other resorts might refer to as a butler. Tho here acted as our dedicated point of contact throughout our stay, and he was phenomenal. When we return, we will absolutely be asking him to be our gem again. After receiving a full property tour, we were shown to our villa, where we find something very cool waiting for us. To start, you'll see they give us each a bike with our initials on the back, and we do get to keep these. You must be wondering, what does the villa look like? Well, I think it's time to show you. So let's take a look inside. True to Six Sense's design philosophy, the whole villa is themed with wood and other sustainable materials, which I personally love because it's not just a luxury resort planted on an island somewhere, it feels like the room really belongs. And of course, right out front, the bluest and clearest water you've ever seen. I don't think I can resist jumping in. We told him it was my girlfriend's birthday two weeks ago, so they left us a variety of delicious treats. And to show you how good the service here is, we told them that we don't drink. So instead of leaving us the typical welcome amenity of a bottle of wine, which we wouldn't enjoy, they left us non-alcoholic wine, which was just such an awesome touch. Taking a look at the bathroom, we can start to see some of the villa's most unique features, such as a glass bottom floor in the toilet, as well as a full glass bathtub. Is this even reality anymore? Both the bathtub and shower or outdoors, which was just amazing. Taking a nice shower, hearing the water up against the pillars of the villa is just a surreal feeling. The whole bathroom does have a privacy wall, and there is a ladder that goes directly into the water. Moving on to the rooftop deck, which yes, we have a second story here, we can see beautiful and expansive ocean views, which we can soak up and enjoy from the daybed. Heading down, we should be careful because it is a bit steep. Now let's look more at our outside terrace. Right in front of the room is the prettiest water you've ever seen, which I cannot get enough of. And of course, as a Maldives standard, we have overwater hammocks, which were pretty comfortable, but we didn't find ourselves using them that much because there's a set of much more comfortable loungers. We spent hours on these, soaking in the sun and listening to the water. One night, we even almost fell asleep looking at the beautiful, clear night sky. On our day of arrival, we were just so tired, so we skipped dinner and went to bed early. But when we woke up, we were greeted to our favorite breakfast spread of all time. Are you having a good time? Yeah, but I want to have a better time with choco here. Breakfast is served in the massive overwater facilities, and oh my god, the food is superb. There is just such an insane variety of options, and everything is as fresh as it can be. From the pad thai, honey, yogurt, fruit, pastries, juice, cereal, cereal toppings, whatever this is, gluten-free, meats, cheese, more meats, more cheese, and even the Maldivian cooking hut which I forgot to film, you will have a lot of choices. There's a menu to also order off of for even a greater variety of dishes. While you look at some of the breakfasts that we ate, let me tell you how good the service is. On the first morning, I went over to the pancake station, 
and I looked at it and I said, oh, that looks good. Five minutes later, the chef making the pancakes brought one over to my table. I didn't even have to ask for one. All I said was, that looks good. Additionally, the person at the Laksa or Pad Thai station always remembered our names and that we were vegetarian. Every morning when greeting us, he would tell us if the dish of the day was vegetarian or not. If it wasn't vegetarian, he always made sure to make a special version for us. Just top tier service. And the views are no slouch either. After finishing our delectable meal, we gotta use the restroom. And what is this? Are you seeing this? I I'm not even gonna say anything, just, just look. Now that we've used what might be the world's most beautiful bathroom, let's bike around and go over to the pool. While no competition for the ocean, the pool is still wonderful, where there is a bar and restaurant. And funny enough, despite the rooms here going for a minimum of $1,500 a night, everyone still shows up here at happy hour to get half price drinks. I guess no one is too rich to hunt for a bargain. At the beach here, we'll find another Maldives staple, hammocks inside the water. I think I'm in the mood for some ice cream. And luckily for us, Six Senses Lamu offers free ice cream and sorbet to all guests. And they are delicious. Unfortunately though, they only offer about 40 to 50 different homemade varieties. It's tough out here, guys. My favorite part is that these are not run-of-the-mill big box ice creams. They're all homemade with fully natural ingredients. My personal favorite is burnt milk and sea salt. Jessica actually tried every single flavor. I am not joking. So what flavor did you get? Cookie Monster. Top notch. Every flavor has been so good here. Now that we've stuffed ourselves with ice cream, let's take a look at the gym. And of course, it just casually has breathtaking views. You probably know what to expect now. I attempt some push-ups, but let's cut the video before I fail. I want to show you a very fun experience we had. We did the inflatable ride where they take us behind a boat and tow us very fast. Oh, man. Let's just relax a bit now, laying in the hammock, playing tic-tac-toe in the sand, and enjoying the sunset. Because it is almost time for dinner. We'll cover all the options here, but for our second night at the resort, we ate at Zen, the Japanese restaurant. Normally, I do not like Japanese food, but wow, was this good. And as you might expect, expensive. However, we do have one superpower here. Us both being vegetarians that don't drink alcohol, our meals are gonna be significantly cheaper than most people. So just keep that in mind when looking at the bill. On a different night, we went to the Thai food themed dinner, which was also very good, but a bit spicy for us. For a third option, there is the chill bar, which is the all day dining restaurant. Here they have a very cool feature where if you want a dish that isn't on the menu, they will make it for you. And of course, I used this very unique opportunity to have some of the world's best prepared mac and cheese. While all these dinners are great, my favorite restaurant at Six Senses Lamu is Leaf, their fine dining restaurant with their own garden out front. We got the best table in the house right in front with full ocean views. They have both a normal and a vegan menu if you want. I think it's safe to say that the food here is nothing short of Michelin quality. We ate here on two different occasions, and they were our favorite two meals of our entire trip. I miss the onion velote and the beetroot risotto so much. There's an open kitchen right in the middle where you can see them preparing food. Please eat here, you will not regret it. A new day brings new opportunities. So let's go to Chill Bar, where there's a dedicated spot right in front to snorkel. First though, I'm gonna eat a little bit and just enjoy how ridiculously, absurdly beautiful the water is. Heading in, we will find no shortage of marine life and coral. And while this is of course wonderful, the real fun begins at night. because we both did the guided night snorkeling activity. A lot of other guests recommended this, and I have to agree with them. It felt like a movie, watching everyone wave their flashlights around underwater. It was a surreal experience. And to be clear, while you may see unique marine life at night, there is no shortage in the day either. One thing I think I should talk about is that the resort does not allow drones on the main grounds, due to the fact that basically every room has an outdoor shower. However, there is one spot you can fly drones, and that is the resort's very own sandbank. So we booked the excursion to head out here and get some amazing footage. And this is such a unique experience, being on your own private island essentially, with perfect untouched white beautiful sand. 
Given the price of food here and the fact that breakfast is complimentary, we tried to skip lunch most days. But one day that we did have it was at Sip Sip, the poolside restaurant, where we got a buffalo cheese pizza and a garden salad. I love how for the bread dip, they arrange it into the Six Senses logo. Very nice touch. One of the days we went on the sustainability tour where we got to see how they make a lot of the stuff on the resort. One cool part is the Kukulu village, basically the chicken pen. They don't provide enough eggs for the whole resort, of course, but a little bit helps. As our stay progressed, we really just loved biking around the hotel, jumping in the water, and enjoying being in the Maldives. But maybe I've got one more cool water sport planned, the jet blade where you put some boots on that are strapped to a jet ski and you get to fly. It costs well over $200, but it was worth it. It was my second time using a device like this, but to be honest, it's pretty easy to learn. safe to say I had a good time on this. This is as good as it gets. There's no other place on earth I want to come to again as much as the Maldives. On one of our last days at Six Senses Lamu, they had one of my favorite events of all, the management cocktail party, where as you might expect, there's free drinks and snacks. They had a local band come and play, and my favorite part about this was just socializing with all the other guests. A lot of people were very interested how we were able to stay here, because the typical clientele here is very wealthy, and we were without a doubt the youngest and poorest guests at this hotel. It was really fun explaining to people how we were able to do this for such a small fraction of the cost. And if one of your goals in life is to travel around the world in the most luxurious luxurious way possible, for as cheap as possible, then you should stay subscribed. And also consider joining our free Discord group down below. We have some really smart people in there. If you want to know how we booked this place for 80% off, take a look at the description, where I provide a full breakdown. On the day of departure, our flight left Malé quite late, so we were very graciously given a 6pm checkout time from the villa, which is the latest I've ever received at any hotel. Sadly, since today's our last day, I have to head back to the villa so we can finish packing up and heading on to Doha. When it was time to leave, though here picked us up at the villa, taking us to the main lobby, where we got to enjoy one final bowl of ice cream. Jessica, how do you feel? I feel really sad. Our last ice cream. It's really tough. I don't know, but I miss Choco. Why are you so happy? You shouldn't be happy, we have to leave. <laughs> Though here also took a Polaroid of me and Jessica to put it in a nice frame and give to us as a very wonderful gift. As the boat departed, a variety of staff members waved us goodbye. This had to be the toughest boat ride we've ever taken, leaving a place that is as close to paradise as I ever could imagine. Saying goodbye to the staff felt like I was saying goodbye to close friends. I even follow a few of them now on Instagram. Once our speedboat ride is completed, we then take a domestic flight back into Malé, where we fly Qatar Airways business class into Doha. While this Maldives trip is over, the trips you will see on this channel are just beginning. Please stay subscribed, because next week we are flying 16 hours in the world's best business class, Qatar Airways Q Suites. I truly hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you next week.